All right, we're gonna replace the impeller on this Mercury four stroke today. This is a 90 horsepower, 2015 model. This is a newer one. I haven't seen a video on one of these newer ones yet. The impeller is right in there. You see the little holes where the water intake goes in? Right above that, there's a stainless steel cup area that the impeller is housed into. Um, they say you need to replace an impeller every year sometimes uh, if you take it to a marina you definitely need to do that because they will run it dry because they always do that's what marinas do uh, if you don't take it to a marina and you take care of it yourself and don't run it dry uh, they last about five years or more you see these two big bolts here there's also two other bolts on the other side and uh, that's what holds the lower unit on I'm gonna take those bolts off and drop it down while I'm down here, I wanted to point out, uh, you see some fishing line to tie it up on here. You see that little white washer that goes in between the prop and the lower unit that does get damaged from fishing line. So if you get fishing line up in there, you have to replace that white washer. It's really easy. You just remove the propeller from this bolt right here and pull the propeller off and then the washer pops in and out. Uh, if you have that problem if you get fishing line around there at some point and don't notice it what happens is you'll get ventilation because exhaust gases will be coming out in front of the propeller and then you'll lose a little speed in addition to these four bolts two on each side the trim tab here bolt also holds it up so you have to do that there's a little rubber grommet right there you pull off and it's a 13 millimeter after you pull the trim tab bolt off, there's another bolt up underneath there. You gotta take that one off too. This one's a 14 millimeter. All right, now you see the lower unit loosened up. It's a trim tab bolt in here. Then once that's out, there's another bolt that faces up from this direction. This one was a 13, this one was a 14. Uh, these I actually use an adjustable wrench, so don't know, it looks like a 16. Uh, here, here, and then the other side, there's two more of those. So a total of six bolts you gotta remove. And you see the daylight coming between the upper and lower unit now. She's loose. We'll go ahead and start pulling down. I'm about to get this lower unit dropped down. I just wanted to stop and show y'all this right here. That gray piece right there, you can actually see the bolts on the top of it. That is the housing for your impeller. That's where it sits right there. All right, I dropped it down a little bit more and I wanted to stop and talk about it for a second because this is actually a really good design. I've done older outboards before and basically you have to find a way to disconnect the shift linkage and also the uh, speedometer hose. And this one, as you can see, see there's the cup where the impeller goes. That silver shaft right there is your shift linkage. So as, as long as you have it in neutral and the shifter's in neutral, that actually goes right back up into a little shaft right there so you don't have to actually disconnect anything it does it by itself and there's the speedometer tube which does the same thing great design that means to do the lower unit all you gotta do is take off those four nuts and those two right there and the whole unit drops down all right i stop it again just to show you this this is what connects the impeller housing to the tube where the water goes up into the motor. See that sits on right there. And again, good design, the nice bevel right there. As long as you have it close, it should just suck right up on there just like it's supposed to. All right, another good look at this lower unit. Now some history on this one. This was ran dry for an extended period of time. So the motor did actually overheat. We are replacing the impeller and the thermostat and I'm gonna be blowing out the lines with some fresh water to make sure there's no pieces of impeller in there. I fully expect to open this up and just have shredded impeller everywhere. So, I'll show you that. Just a little tip, you set it on your floor jack like this, you can actually stick the bottom fin in the edge of your floor jack, holds it up like that perfectly. Impeller housing has a classic 10 millimeter.
are not very tight, when you're tightening it back up, don't over tighten it. All right, in order to get this housing off, I'm going to have to get this seal slid up all the way up off the shaft. So and it's a little stuck right now. So I'm gonna put a little silicone lube on it because it's rubber safe. Try to save that seal. And I'm gonna work it loose. Because you know, silicone lube is good for everything. Literally everything. From the bedroom to the garage. All right, I wiggled that washer up, no problem. All the way off the shaft. I'm gonna go on that. Uh, I always end up getting my parts from boats.net. I don't, you know, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but it just seems like they always have the, the stuff, the best selection and a good price. You see, I got the thermostat itself. I'm gonna replace the housing because sometimes when these things run dry, they melt all over them. They make some really nasty. There's the plate that goes underneath it. It makes them really nasty and they're like impossible to clean. This is that plastic washer. It goes under there. There's our new impeller. All right, and moment of truth, let's see what this looks like. That's actually not bad at all. How about that? So this is my impeller after five years which is actually pretty good shape. Not nearly as melted as I expected. See, we got some sand and some dirt in there. I'm gonna clean all that out. Obviously, I'm gonna replace the impeller anyway because I'm underneath of it. Now, note what direction these fins turn because they can be damaged if you put them in the wrong way and then when you start up, they have to force themselves over top, you know, to twist and go the right way. You want to install them in the right direction. Be careful when you're disassembling this for uh, removal and replacement because if you see this shaft, it has that indent, and this goes right here, and that key is what turns your impeller. So you definitely need to make sure you don't lose that. All right, there's the new impeller and the new housing. Um, I did have the silicone lubricant here, so I just twisted it into place with that. Uh, if you don't have silicone lubricant on you, dish soap works fine. Makes it slippery and gets out of there after it's started up in the water. All right, the replacement kit comes with an O-ring that goes around this to help seal out the water. And while it's open, you should definitely replace the O-ring. You need to remove this and you can very gently go up like that and pull that ring out and then that will pop out. Once you pull out the retaining ring, see there's a little hole there, and there's also a little hole on the other side. Pry up from both sides simultaneously, slowly, and it does pop loose, and you see the O-ring right there. Slide that whole piece up and off the shaft, or you can just leave it there if you really want. You need to clean everything, make it nice and clean, see it's got some dirt, some sand in there. You clean those two areas and replace that O-ring. Just a little helpful thing with O-rings like this. You obviously don't want to stick a screwdriver in there and damage the uh, groove. Then you might end up with a leak that's worse than having an old one to start with. So what you do is you start your fingers like this and push as you go around. And you see it's bowed out a little bit now. And I'll be able to use my other finger to pull that off. All right, you see that's nice and clean now. That's nice and clean. I am gonna put a little bit of silicone on again because it's rubber safe and you want it to be able to smoothly go in there without damaging the O-ring. All right, new O-ring is on there. Just kind of have to work it and wiggle it down. I'm gonna use two hands, but you're gonna have to tap it very gently until it's down far enough for the ring to go around this channel and to hold this down. We seated down there. Now this ring can go in. Let's put this ring over the shaft. There it is. I'm going to squeeze it together. There you have it, it's back in. It's not fully seated, so I'm gonna tap this down just a hair more and then it'll click in.
There you see it, fully seated down in there. I used a little piece of uh, wood as a block to tap on with the hammer real gently. Now for reassembly, this little plate goes down first. If you put it on backwards, or upside down should I say, uh, the holes will be misaligned very slightly. So if the holes look misaligned, flip it to the other side and see if it sits better. Which This is the correct way for this one. And the next piece, is your bottom plate. This is the old bottom plate so you can see the direction, the orientation. You want to set it up because this would be backwards. This is the right way. Same thing, slide that over the top. Now that's on. And you've got this gasket, gray gasket side up. Then you're ready for your actual housing with the new impeller in it. Now you do need to align the keyhole opening on here so you can see how that will fit in. I can't see if there's the open. Let me put that key in. There's the key. I'm actually going to turn this so that it's leaning uphill, which will make it hold itself in there while I'm lowering the propeller on there, impeller. You see the keys facing the long part. So you turn this. So you got that. You can actually use your finger and kind of straighten that out and it'll stay. Now we're lined up, ready to put it in. Hard to do with one hand, I'll get it lined up. Alright, the impeller key is lined up on the impeller like it's supposed to be. These holes in the gaskets are all stacked well. Obviously be very careful when you put the bolts in. Make sure you don't damage the gaskets. Kind of wiggle them so you can get in there and have them all lined properly. Put all four in. And I'm going to tighten them down. And I'll come back. All right, it's reassembled and tightened down. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on. Now for this, I'm actually going to tilt the motor out and then just pick up the lower unit and walk it in nice and slow. Don't forget this bad boy right here. Make sure that's firmly all the way on. This is the shift linkage thing. This will go slide right back in. That's the speed tube. That'll go right back into. All right, so this little shifter shaft right here is very sensitive, so there's a good chance it will be in either forward or backward gear. You need to check and make sure which it's in forward right now. You need to set the control helm to forward as well. Thing is the shaft. Put this one in. There it goes. Okay. Have a couple bolts ready.
hold it up for you. Then you'll need to go and check and make sure the forward and reverse works fine. We're in forward right now. I'll go to neutral, make sure it goes in neutral, then I'll go in reverse, make sure it's in reverse. All right, it's all back on. I tried forward and reverse. Everything works as it's supposed to. It goes in neutral just like it's supposed to, which means that it's in the right position. I'm gonna tighten these bolts back up now. And the one from underneath here. There's a five bolts that hold it on. The trim tab bolt actually does not hold it on. I said that wrong before. Uh, but I will need to reinstall that as well. And then it's time to do the anti-ventilation washer. I also wanted to mention, I didn't know if you noticed before when I was putting it on, it wasn't going up all the way. Then I kind of twisted this like this and that wiggled the shaft and made the splines line up and it slipped in. Just to touch base on it while we're sitting here, uh, a lot of people would change the anode at this point. Uh, this boat's five years old, has 175 hours on it. Uh, if this boat were kept in the water, I would absolutely change it. But you can tell just by looking at this, this anode is completely fine. What happens is they start getting porous looking and they get really light by weight. If you wanted to really check it, you'd have to take it off and weigh it. But no point in doing that because I can see it's still like brand new. All right, everything's back together, but I have to take it all back down again because I forgot this little guy. Remember this fella? He was over the drive shaft where it seals to the propeller house, impeller housing. So forgot to put that on, pull it back down, put it back on. Here's the impeller housing. This is where that goes. So I'm gonna slide that over here carefully not to damage. Okay. And there it is. Wish I had done that the first time. All right. I fired it up on the earmuffs. You gotta run in the driveway. If you have a good pair of those, the circular ones feel better than the square ones. Fired it up. Checked everything up here, no leaks. Everything looks good. P-stream right here, coming out really strong. So everything good to go.